welcome to a brand new episode of your favourite podcast show, Nostalgia Bait. This is the Marvel episode, one of our first, and probably many. We're going to be talking about phase one of Marvel today, and I'm joined by my wonderful co-host, Dick Curie. <laughs> what? I don't know. Look, I look, look. <laughs> I thought... For a panic. Right. <laughs> So I'm so honestly. Uh, please explain this. I'm so confused. There's nothing in there. Basically, for those listening, I tried to come up with it. I was talking about trying to come up with a funny pun name of a Marvel character to call Cooper when I started. Uh, Cooper Britton, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Woo. Hello, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, hippie, um, hippie. Why do you keep doing that? It's very strange. Have you not seen that meme? I've not seen that. I thought I'll that was just. A, I thought that was a you thing. Oh no, it's a me. I'll show you afterwards. Remind me. I'll show like, you. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I was trying to come anyway. up with a Marvel name, a funny little name to start with, and I was like, you know what, fuck it, I can't think of anything, I will just do it on the spot, we'll, we'll start recording, and I will say something, honestly, it'll be dynamite, and the best I could come up with is, was Dick Curie. <laughs> <laughs> dynamite, firework, you know. Yeah, yeah, sparkler. Um, yeah, nice. Spire, sparkler's a better one, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, we're going to talk about Marvel today, Cooper. It is the Marvel phase well. It's the... It's, it's the Marvel episode. It's the of, Marvel episode. Like you said, the first of many, specifically Marvel Phase 1. We thought we'd uh, cover the Marvel films and talk about yeah. them um, in a sort of a kind of nostalgic sense. We haven't sat down and re-watched all six of the films in this um, little uh, phase, I guess you'd call it. But this is the first phase of Marvel. It's the very first six films that were released before they start to become into this big thing that started abusing CGI workers. Um, it, it's sort of... <laughs> Oh. <laughs> um, it's uh so yeah we thought we'd review that today and if people like it and people want to see more of it then we'll probably talk about phase two and phase three and god forbid phase four and five are we on now phase, i think okay, it might be phase six you're joking phase, is phase four not end game is it is i thought phase, it was phase three wasn't it i don't know i'm the marvel guy i don't know you're the I'm... marvel guy that's not a title know. to live by my friend do you want that on your anyway gravestone? When was the last time you watched any of these movies? Do you that's think? good, that's good, yeah. Official review, and the last time I watched them, Cooper, was, I don't fucking know, years ago. Um, probably, I reckon, probably like, after, two after lockdown. Years ago. So not too long ago. Yeah. Like, a couple of years ago, definitely. I did a Marvel yeah. rewatch around then. Um, yeah, so did I. So yeah. I reckon it's probably around then. Um, mm. However, one of these films is one of my favourite Marvel movies of all time. So. Really? Yeah, genuinely. Yeah, yeah. Well, yep. Then you have poor taste. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> no, it's um, fine. That's good, though, because I want us to disagree. And as as many people at my work are saying, um, men love lists. So we're going to be ranking... Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be ranking these films, both of us. Apparently people like this. We'll just keep doing this format until it's tired and old. Um, so today we are going to be ranking all of these films um, from worst to best, and we're going to be following the same format that we have before with the Oscars, where we'll say our number six, our number five, our number four, our number three, our number two, our number one, and we'll only talk about a film when we've both mentioned it and kind of talk about it in a better detail. And the fun of that will, of course, be that we haven't seen these films in a little while, so it'll be a lot of reminiscing and sort of random recollection i guess so that'll be a lot of fun how does that sound cooper uh good i can confirm we are currently in marvel phase five you were correct congratulations oh that's not a thing to be proud of i'd rather not know at all because <laughs> that's embarrassing i've got you know i've got street cred sure okay <laughs> <laughs> anyway let's let's, let's start straight in you got your list in front of you right i've got my yeah, list in front of me mine is in front of me yeah yeah um <laughs> you know, you know, like a, a joke comes into your head. You're like, I can't say that. <laughs> um, so I think we should start with number six. Yes, I start with number six, as, as opposed to number three. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Let's start at the bottom and start at the top. Yeah, I think that's more interesting. Uh, definitely, definitely. Oh, we'll spice it up. We'll start from the best. And, you know. <laughs> um, so worst film, number six out of the four. Let's let's actually d- describe what the films are. So you have got Iron yeah. Man. Um, you got Iron Man, The Incredible Hulk, Iron Man 2, yeah. Thor, Captain America, The First Avenger, and The Avengers, or Avengers Assemble, depending on where you are in the world. Okay, I was going to mention this. For some reason, when I was a kid, I remember the movie being called Avengers Assemble. No, it's And not. over my years... Over your years. It, like, yeah, you know what I mean. Like, when the movie first came out, for some reason, I seem to remember it being called Avengers Assemble. And then all of a sudden... There was one moment when I was I was like rewatching them, and I was looking. I was googling Avengers Assemble, like looking for the movie and couldn't find it. And then realized it was called The Avengers. Have I literally just got that wrong my entire life? So or, you'll love this. 
So the film is called The Avengers. Yeah. However, Uh in the UK and Ireland, it was called Avengers Assemble. Oh my God. Yeah. I no word of a lie thought I was genuinely going insane. No, no. I mean, it's literally the first line of the wiki. You could have saved yourself years of trauma there. But I mean... (laughs) Um... But that's fun. Yeah, that, those are the films we're talking about. Avengers Assemble or The Avengers, depending on your politics. Yeah. Um, let's start with number six. Cooper, what's your, what's your least favourite Marvel film? My least favourite is The Incredible Hulk. And it's mine as well. So let's talk about yeah. The Incredible Hulk. Can you remember um, The Incredible Hulk that well? No. Um, <laughs> last time I rewatched these, when because so the last time I rewatched these movies is when me and my girlfriend watched through all of them in order. Mm-hmm. Um, and we skipped Incredible Hulk because... Oh, really? Up, and, up until recently, I was like, it's not canon. <laughs> it is, eyes, though. I was like... It is canon, and it is very Idiot. much canon now after, after She Hulk. Idiot! Um, well, just watch it's, it. I hate, I hate, I hate that movie. I mean, it's, uh, I'll, I'll say this: I don't I think it. it's the worst Marvel film I've ever seen. I reckon it's down there, though. Yeah, it's down there, but it's not the worst. This is my thing with this, right? Is I am a bit of a, I'm a little bit of a fiend for nostalgia. I don't know if you could tell by the name <laughs> of this podcast, but I, I, I do. Not in a sort of sense of like random sort of cameos and stuff. We're very much, we'll get into that when we talk about later phases of Marvel. But I kind of prefer the fact that they didn't quite get what they were doing yet. They had, they didn't quite have the Marvel mold that they have in modern films. Where like, it looks exactly the same. Same sort of CGI, same sort of writing, same sort of acting, same sort of directing. This was like, very unique. They had Iron Man, and then they had a very dark Incredible Hulk film. Which wasn't very sort of funny and also the whole thing what do you mean by the whole she hulk thing by the way what what why well, does that make it canon now because um what's his name abominable who's the villain in the incredible hulk yeah is in she hulk yeah but then general ross is in civil war as the like the lead antagonist to the whole like That's government true, thing yeah, actually so it's it, there's, there's, there's layers to it but I, i'm exactly the same i was sort of a little bit like well mainly because it's easier because it's got edward norton in it instead of mark ruffalo but i think yeah. edward norton's pretty good in this film he's no mark ruffalo I think Mark Ruffalo is better in this role. But I, do, I just, you know, for a second, I, I think I just called him Mark Ruffalo. <laughs> <That's, laughs> really Mark Ruffalo. Um, but I think Mark Ruffalo is great in the role. I, I, I think Edward Norton d- gives something different here, which is why I quite like it. And it's a bit different and it's a bit interesting. I think that it's one of those ones that um, it's a far from perfect film. But what I'm trying to say is that I like the idea that it's. It is different. It is a bit darker. It is a bit dingier. It is a little bit more sloppy around the edges. It feels like a proper bloody film. Like mm-hmm. when I watch The Incredible yeah. Hulk, I'm watching a film. I'm not watching slop, mass produced slop, which is what yeah, but you, this I is think compar- you get. But this is comparing it to like nowadays. Which it, yeah, which means by comparison, this should look worse, but somehow it looks better because it's more unique. You learn from your lessons, oh. you don't start making them, right? I don't know. I don't like this movie. <laughs> no, I, I don't, don't love like it. it. I don't love it. I'm just making the point that, yes, it's the bottom of my phase one. No, it's not the worst Marvel film. Oh, I don't, I, but honestly, I don't. I can't think of any other Marvel movie that I would... I, that, there's no other Marvel... I'd rather watch every other Marvel movie than this movie Dark in my head. Thor Dark I'd rather World. watch Dark World. Would you? I'd rather watch Thor Dark World than watch Incredible Hulk. In my mind. Um... I can't think of any Secret other ones. Invasion. I didn't watch Secret. That's a TV show. Doesn't count. Those count. Some Marvel property. Oh, I suppose. Fair I only okay. watched like, the first. Okay, we'll not. We'll not count the TV shows. I only watched like the first episode of that. Um, maybe it is pretty bad then, because <laughs> I can't think of an example. I'd rather not. There you go. See. Um, you telling me you'd you'd rather watch Incredible Hulk than Thor: Dark World? Yeah. So yeah, I would that's the only one I think. That's Thor: Dark World's the only one that gets close. I think, but I'd still rather watch Thor: Dark World. Nah, boring. <laughs> it's really shit. I thought that world. I, I don't. I, I just didn't. I got it, but I didn't get it. You know this. I was going. This, this is this basically is, look, look, this, yeah. look. Let's not get it. But like the Incredible Hulk, right? Look, it's not a great film. Yeah. However, We've established. Oh, <laughs> it has the source. I think it has some source in there, and I think I think it's got a little bit of a little bit of the special something. Now this is still the bottom of my list, by the way. We're not yeah. we're not contesting for the place on this list. We're just contesting for how good the quality of the film is. I don't think it's ass. I think I've seen yeah. I've seen a lot of better film, but I've seen a good few worse films as well than this. It's kind of just bang average and forgettable. That's its worst crime. Is it's kind of forgettable. Yeah, probably. But that's I think, probably why you know. Mm. That's, 
I'd probably rather watch the bad Marvel movies because they are bad, whereas this one's just bang average. That's the thing with this. It's not like yeah. a bad film. It is just poor. It's just like you just kind yeah. of forget a lot of elements from it. Although you do get a lot of essential setup for the Hulk. There's going to be payoff to these characters eventually. There's like they're doing yeah. something with it. Like I'm sure like there's a guy in... She-Hulk was a pretty good payoff kind of with like a bo- um, abomination. Bom- abomination. But then there's yeah. the other thing um, as well. There was a guy also in the, the Hulk the who... Joke- who, the who, joke that Mark Ruffalo makes, saying that he's a completely different person. Yeah, and, that's uh, kind of funny. That, which was pretty good. That's pretty good. I did like She-Hulk. I know a lot of people don't like She-Hulk, but I I, I don't know. I think they're misogynist or boring. So, um, <laughs> I know it's not the perfect show, but it, it's it's you know it's still fun. It's just fun, and it's just it it. I can give it a pass for that. I enjoyed it for that. I'm just um, going to not comment until we get to that point, so... <laughs> sure, Because sure. I could be here forever, don't know about She-Hulk, so... Um, anyway. Ooh, interesting. I'm interested, but... I, I like She-Hulk, by the way, okay, but, cool, cool. For, but I've pl- I've had plenty of long discussions with people who don't like She-Hulk. I think it's why good. why I like She-Hulk. It's not the best thing in the world, but it's yeah. it's it's good. Like, yeah. it's not it's not by any means bad. I think... Um, yeah. But my question to that is there's a character in uh, The Incredible Hulk who gets... Um, I think some of the Hulk blood or something on him, and then he starts to like swell up, and then we never see him again. But I think his character is actually returning at some point oh, in a future Marvel film. Maybe it's the Ooh. new Captain America film. I'm not sure. Something what, like it's, that. Uh, it's something oh, he's like not Red doing Red Hulk. No, 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 no. We're not talking about General Ross, although he is obviously in that film as say, well. Yeah. Recast. Yes. Being played by Harrison Ford of all people. Yeah, in Thunderbolts. Yeah. Yes. Um, but he's not a Red Hulk in Thunderbolts, so it literally defeats the point. We don't know that. Harrison Ford, got asked in it, Harrison Ford got asked in the interview, he's like, what's a Hulk? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which, if that's acting, if he's playing that up, it's think, incredible. But I think he does a little but, bit, though. I think he does a little bit. He's very good. I at don't... That. I don't know. Anyway, that's later on. <laughs> that's like phase six. Anyway. Um, um, but yeah, yeah, I think... Incredible Hulk, I just don't... I, just I, think Edward Norton, and... I think Edward Norton does a good performance. I don't really care much for the relationship subplot. Yeah. I like... I think even for the time, I think some of the Hulk CGI is interesting and good. And I kind of like some of the... Mm-hmm. The scenes and the idea of it, I think the idea of it being like it's super interesting. They're already trying to tie things together, like it being considering this is like two, three films before we get a Captain America film. It's kind of cool that they're already mentioning the super, uh, the super serum program thing at the beginning. Oh yes, I and that's what they're trying yeah. to do is they're trying to experiment yeah, on is. Bruce Banner to sort of get yeah. him into this, and then the experiment goes wrong, and then they try and hunt him down for it. It's very interesting, yeah. like from a story point of view and a character point of view it is super interesting and it does pave the way for where we see him in uh, avengers which i quite like actually and i think that there is some good that's what i'm saying this film is like it's it hasn't got that sort of generic slop feel of newer marvel things where it's just like the same as everything else it is unique which is why i think it has a bit of sauce to it mm-hmm. but also <laughs> you know it's not great but it does it sets up a lot and I, and I like that and i like what it tries to do i don't think by any means it's bad i think it's got a hell of a reputation but i think also that's probably part of the recasting if it was mark ruffalo yeah. in this film and it was exactly the same but just with mark ruffalo i don't think people would think it is as bad the problem is it's an early marvel film so it's easy to cut out and it has different cast so it's easy to cut out yeah. but i don't think that's fair at all um but yeah anyway i yeah I, it's mid <laughs> so it's so, I just, I just it's just not like i don't have passion for it it's like sure i think it's just so not disconnected, but it just feels so disconnected mm. that, and I think yeah, it's like you have like Iron Man, Iron Man. Um, do you know what? We'll get to Iron Man. We get to Iron Man yeah. anyway. Number five. Um, what are you thinking? Iron Man two. Ooh. What's I w- yours? I went for Thor. Okay, that's fair enough. I went for Thor, so we'll yeah. not talk about them yet. Yeah. What? <laughs> Moving on What's from Thor. Favorite? What is your number four? <laughs> Thor. And mine is Iron Man 2. So we could talk about there both of go. these. That's good. Yeah, we talk about both of so these. So again, kind of similar thinking a little bit. Um, yeah. Let's talk about Thor first, maybe. Um, Thor... I just... It's a... I yeah. just think it's really kind of cringe, to be honest. Like, Thor, I, I remember... <laughs> I remember when I, I... Thor, when I rewatched the first one, I actually really enjoyed. And that's kind of what I'm rising off. Mm-hmm. And I like. It's okay. I think it's a good setup for Thor as well. I think it's a good introduction. It's a really for, good introduction, but it needed to be a good introduction because Loki was going to be the villain in the Avengers, right? But yeah. I think for me, I just I can't get over the like the little things. It's like the design of him looks terrible. Why has he got like? <laughs> it's not like his hair's not that long. It's just kind of like a sort of. He's got like, yeah. The he's hair got, is he's very got, strange. He's got like the Jodie Whittaker bob, and yeah. he's got. 
like bl- like bleach blonde yeah. eyebrows, which looks awful. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, and it's just kind of like. I don't know. I feel like it could have been something so much more special. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like for yeah. a Thor film, I think the, 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 the prospect of it's sort of like a man fallen from the sky, lost all his powers, and he falls in love with this girl. It's like the premise is all there. The story itself is actually pretty good. I think mm-hmm. it's just... It's just, just kind of hits the mark. Just kind of uh, misses the mark. It kind of. Well, no, I think it kind of just... It does exactly what it needs to do, but again, it hasn't, yeah. it hasn't got the sauce. <laughs> you are loving this word today. You are absolutely <laughs> loving this words today. I am. I, I, I just don't know. I just don't think it. I don't know. I just don't think it. It's yeah. Carries. I think that my much. I think my it's... Iron Man, Iron Man two and Thor are kind of like reversible for me. Like they're probably around the same level. Mm. Um, with them being like bottom half. Like I think Iron Man two is uh, better, but I don't know. Like this is where this is where we have to contest a little bit, yeah. I guess, because you think Thor is better than Iron Man two. I think Iron Man two is better than Thor. I think Iron Man two is fun. Yeah, I guess so. Isn't Iron Man 2, like, hated, though? I don't, or is Iron Man 3? Iron Man really 3 like. people hate, but, but again, yeah. that's better than Iron Man but 2. But I like Iron Man 3, yeah. I Iron, Man really 3 like Iron Man 3 is nuanced well. and interesting and different yeah. and has some great action set pieces. Um, Iron Man 2, again, I, I kind of like what they did with it. I wish it, you know, I wish John Favreau got to have a little bit more of a say with his own vision. Yeah. But I think Iron Man 2 is an interesting case because then you can study the other film, which came off the back of this like there's a film which exists in entirety because of the production process of iron man 2 i don't know if you know about this yeah 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 chef have you seen chef yeah i've not seen it but i know of it yeah <laughs> i've seen chef i've seen chef twice oh, yeah. <laughs> i think it's a great film actually yeah. and i think it's great i don't know if you've heard about the whole thing so it's you've got chef which is a john favreau film which he made after iron man 2 stars most of the main cast from iron man 2 and yeah is basically a metaphor for his feelings towards Marvel off the back of the production of Iron Man 2. I think I remember this. And this I is I because John yeah. Favreau was originally penned to direct the Avengers. Was he? And he didn't get the shot because of Iron Man 2, place. right? He was pushed yeah. by studio pressure to make Iron Man 2 go in a certain direction that he didn't want yeah. to take it in, right? And that's what Chef is all about. When you watch Chef and you walk in, if you, if you watch Chef with that metaphor mm-hmm. in your head it's so you insane see. it's so insane yeah. because it's not I mean, Jeff's a good film it's a, it is a good film it's a really good film but it's not like the best thing in the world but the cool thing about it is that John Favreau plays this chef who's working in a restaurant the chef is really good he's cooking he's got all his mm-hmm. ideas and the owner's like no you can't do yeah. this whatever, whatever whatever and he makes a really boring meal it gets criticised he gets slated yeah. for it and then he like beefs the guy on Twitter and he's like come back review my food again I'm gonna make you the best fucking meal you've ever had in your life and then he comes back in and the owner's like, no, you're not cooking. You're doing the menu. That's what we, you know, what we said. Yeah. Um, and then he gets sacked or he quits or whatever. And then he opens up a food truck and he cooks and he's very successful and world famous and, yeah. he, and he becomes a meme. This is one bit where John Favreau's like, I'm a meme. It's a bit before <laughs> his time, but it's kind of funny because he's someone who doesn't know what yeah. a meme is. Um, but the interesting thing about that is that you can look at it as the restaurant is Marvel Studios, the food truck is Chef, the film. Yeah. <laughs> the food yeah, truck is very... the film itself, and it's sort of like he's getting yeah. out of there, and he's cooking a great film without the assistance of a big studio, and his experience of not being able to let his creative juices flow. That being said, this is the same man who directed the live-action Lion King, so John Favreau can go fuck himself. Just joking! I love him, but the Lion King was shit. Um... <laughs> I love the original Lion King, so it's like... The original, the yeah. original animated. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but I'm slagging off the new one. No, I'm saying, but I love it too much to like, right. it's just rose tinted glasses. Like it's, um, not that I've watched the new one very often now, I've only seen it once, so. Awful. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't get the point. Of it's it. not even close yeah. to the original, but anyway. But yeah, um, anyway. But Iron I, I, 2 and Thor just, again, it's like, they're, ex- they exist, they, I probably would, would only watch them if I'm rewatching, um, if I'm watching them in order, I kinda, like if I'm you know, watching them, I think movies. I think I'd watch. I, mm, I probably would watch Iron Man two, yeah, over Thor. Maybe I, I just I feel like I would, you know. I, pre- I feel like I probably wouldn't watch either, ideally. But I think, yeah, if I was, you know, had a guns in my head, I'd probably prefer that. Thor is campy as fuck. I mean, it's kind of fun in that <laughs> respect because it's so over the top. But it, as I say, it is a little bit. It's got that sort of cringy vibe to it, which I don't really love. To be honest, like I don't yeah. love a lot of that, but I do. I like, do like Jane Foster. I do like her as a character. Yeah, uh, she's good. Yeah, Natalie Portman's yeah. a lot of fun. Um, it was cool to see her back in Thor: Love and Thunder, even though that was a terrible film. Um, it was cool to see her back. She got absolutely shafted in that movie. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, terrible really, really, character. Really poor. Um, really poor. 
But I did like, um, I do like Iron Man 2 for the, a lot of stuff. I love the sort of suit up scenes. I love a lot of that sort of stuff. I think the battles are really cool. I think the idea of the Stark Expo is really cool. Um, mm-hmm. I like Justin Hammer to an extent because yeah. he just is so camp, but it works so well. The scene where um, Whiplash wants his bird, incredible. I want my Iconic, bird. I want my bird. Um, I, I think it's incredible. And I call that so often. It's often. unhealthy. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great scene. <laughs> it's unhealthy. And yeah. Uh, yeah, also that guy who played Whiplash actually, I think, despised working on that production. He actively <laughs> hates it. Like he's, talk, he's, talk, he's talked about it since, and he said it's one of the worst things I think he's ever done in his, oh in his life. God. He actually fucking hates Iron Man 2. Um, what else can I sort of say about that film that hasn't already been said? I feel like it's kind of been covered to the yeah. nth degree. I love the courthouse scene towards the beginning where... Again, this is one thing I will say, and I'll say this with Iron Man as well. But like, um, Robert Downey Jr. as as Tony Stark is one of the best pieces of casting in superhero oh, film it's history. Phenomenal, he just, because like it's... because Robert Downey Jr. right, and this is I mean this in a good way. He is a smug prick, right? <laughs> yeah, he is. Just... That is his yeah. character, right? And the same sort of, you know, he is just that's just what he's like, and he comes across like that. He's very confident and, and sort of knows his stuff. He doesn't come across as, across as awkward or uh, jittery at all. And he very much embodies Tony Stark completely as a character. It was a saving grace for him. It was one of the few roles he was getting at the time. Yeah. And he absolutely sells it. He's brilliant in it. And Oh, he's phenomenal. Yeah, I can't In all it. of his movies, that, and, and I think in all of the movies that Iron Man is in, he's phenomenal. Darrow Dungeon oh, is always incredible. He's always stealing the show. No one else could yeah. have done it quite like him. He's brilliant. He yeah. really, really is. Um, but yeah, I don't know if there's anything else you want to say about Iron Man 2 or Thor. I'm Not really. Yes. Else to say about yeah. Thor, really. It's, yeah, it's just a bizarre... Yeah, it's... It's they're like they're such early movies that it's like, yeah, that the, the the top three are ones that I would probably rewatch on my own, but these bottom three I just would never like, never touch them mm. for the light of day potentially, unless I was forced to watch them or if I was rewatching them for a certain reason, mm. kind of. Yeah, that's I mean that's fair. I I don't really yeah. I I probably wouldn't either. These three are the ones that I probably wouldn't revisit if I had the choice. I mean I have the choice yeah. all the time. I'm not, I don't watch these films regularly, but mm-hmm. if I was rewatching, if I had the choice, I'd probably go now. I'll, I'll miss them out. Yeah. But the top three, I feel like I would. They're the films I would yeah. rewatch. I do as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm kind What's... of torn on my order now a little bit. Ooh, I'm quite I'm quite happy with my order. I'm a I little bit. Is... I'm more certain about my order. Uh, I don't know. I've sort of got my top three in front of me here, and I'm sort of th- now thinking maybe not. Let me just throw it at you and see what Go on. See what, 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 what have you got for number three? My number three is Iron Man, like the first Iron Man, Iron Man 1. Ooh. Yeah. You know what? Impromptu. Yeah. I am going to now swap my number three and number one, which is a big oh. move, which is a big move, can I say? So, the, so whatever you say for number three was originally your number one. Mm-hmm. Okay. What's your number three then? Iron Man. One. Damn. Was. I- Originally, I fully one. respect why it was number one. It's the way like, it started it, it all, and it's yeah. it, it is a good film. But then it's, I sort of remember. It's a good movie. But then I remember to myself, you know, the the giant metal, um, Jeff yeah, Bridges, oh, giant metal <laughs> Jeff Bridges at the end of it, which yes. is just again, yes, it, the Marvel films have a, have a tendency to do this, and I think I'm sort of paraphrasing. Um, the uh, Cosmonaut Variety Hour YouTube channel per person or whatever his name is. Um, great YouTuber. Talks about comic, uh, superhero films all the time. Really, really entertaining stuff. Love it. Um, and he talks about this. It's sort of like a, a thing that Marvel start doing from this point where quite quite a lot of their films, they have just a big CGI thing that they see yeah. the hero has to fight at the end of the film. And it happens quite a lot. The Incredible Hulk has Abomination. Big CGI <laughs> thing. Thor has that big metal thing that Loki big controls. Guy, yeah. That's a big CGI thing. Iron Man 2, uh, Whiplash in a big robot. Um, you know, Iron Man, yeah. uh, Jeff Bridges in a big robot. Mm-hmm. Um, it's tra- uh, tra- yeah, tra- no, what it's, else. It's, yeah, but the uh, other two in this yeah. don't have that. And I think that's the only downside for me is the sort of finale doesn't really cut it. But I think the rest of the film is fascinating. I genuinely think that a lot of um, Iron Man 1 is, is genuinely really good. Oh, I do as well, I think. I think as a first, and again, going back to Robert Downey Jr., like... He is phenomenal in this movie, like unbelievable mm. from start to finish. It's just, it's like he said, it's the most perfect casting for a character ever. It just works he so is, well. He is great. It, he's up there with like Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn. Like he's oh, very, yeah, very as good well, yeah. in, in, in yeah. that role. And he's, he's, he completely sells it. I mean, again, it's, it's, it's completely Robert Downey Jr. Mm-hmm. in his element, really. It's exactly yeah. the kind of role that he should be playing and he's excellent at it. 
yeah. you know, there's no doubt in my mind about that. He's he's brilliant. Yeah, it's yeah, it's like, but even like from for when it's from like down to like the the scene in the cave when he crafts the Mark One Iron Man mm-hmm. suit is led. It's just legendary. It's mm, like it's brilliant. it's such a sta- even after God knows how many Marvel movies now. It's such a staple. Like mm-hmm. the end scene when he's in the he has to like. He's told to deny the fact that he's Iron Man. And he just goes, "I am Iron Man." It's like they're just great moments that yeah. have stuck with fans and stick with me like all the way through, 100%. and kind of do have payoffs later on. And it's just yeah, Most it's, it's really these cool. little there's things, lot, isn't it? There's yeah. a lot of great stuff in there, and I think it, it, it is fascinating. And you get a lot. What I like about this film the most, I think, is actually the Iron Man suit as well. Um, at this yeah. point, mostly practical, you know. Yeah. With a f- very few CGI enhancements, most of that suit mm-hmm. was practical, which I really, really love because you could tell, and it looks so much better. Look, I love a bit of nanotech, but I think, and that sort of makes complete sense for Tony Stark. But I just prefer when you can actually feel and see something on set as opposed to the whole floating head thing you got with Civil War. If you watch Civil War again now, that whole thing with the floating heads is ridiculous. You've got, mm-hmm. you know, um, War Machine and Iron Man, and it's just sort yeah. of. Both of that, those actors' heads just sort of bobbing up and down in a big CGI <laughs> suit, which you, you can sort of tell it doesn't feel natural or look natural or mm-hmm. anything like that. It's, it's crazy, but in this, it's sort of that got that practical feel to it, and it oh, it's so much more like real and gritty. And I think there's something about it being quite an old film now, 2008. Um, how, how long ago wow. is that? I mean, that's like 16 years ago. 16 years ago, spot on. Yeah. Um, yeah, incredible for for the time. I mean, it's 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 a massive yeah. you know achievement. Um, you were coming off the back of of Spider Man and X Men yeah. and Fantastic Four, so to come and, and hell even Batman, you know, Batman Begins I think yeah. was out by this point. Um, and you bring out Iron Man. It's not a very well known. I mean, it's well known to an extent, but not a very popular superhero mm-hmm. character to adapt. You know, it's no Superman, yeah. it's no Batman, it's no Spider Man, but. It's an interesting one. And they play it to perfection. They almost recharacterize the character in a way. They make this Iron Man. You sort of look at that. It's Tony Stark. That is Iron Man. And you almost think that the only way they can do this ever again in comics, video games, anything, has to be to emulate this right here, right yeah. now. And I think that's that's part of the selling point of this film. It's really Tony good. Stark is Robert Downey Jr. Like mm. you can't like you just can't take that away from me. Like mm. every other version just is weird now to me. Mm. Every other version of Iron Man is strange now that it's not Robert Downey Jr. And it's just, it, it, it's, yeah. It's and I think it comes down to everything. Like, I think down to even the script being written and everything. It's like, the script is amazing and the dialogue's fantastic. And like I'm saying, it has points that stick through the whole thing and callbacks. Yeah. Well, what, what are callbacks later on? It's, um, yeah. No, absolutely. It's not I really. I'd happily rewatch this movie any day of the week. Yeah. It's, yeah, easily. Yeah, I think it's, it's 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 spot on. And something again, I yeah. want to just mention as well. John Favreau did a fantastic job with this film. Like, yeah, oh, he he made yeah. a really great film here, um, and it's great to see him start to pull this universe together with this film. If this film hadn't worked, there wouldn't be a Marvel universe because it just wouldn't have got picked up. Oh, it wouldn't have done that well. Doubt. It's incredible. And just on the note of John Favreau, something I forgot to mention with Iron Man Two, which I now want to bring up because it's fucking hilarious, is. Can we appreciate, obviously, that John Favreau casts himself in his own films? And that's great. <laughs> and that's absolutely fine. And I, I love that. I love, I love John Favreau I love, so much. I love that for him. Can we appreciate further that he wrote into the script for Iron Man 2 that his character, Happy Hogan, has to get, like, wrestled to the ground by Scarlett Johansson? <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I can't. That is I true. Mean, Bro, I, I mean, I respect Bro cast himself. Good, good bro saw him was like, <laughs> yeah, he saw his opportunity and he took it. <laughs> bro got um, that bread. <laughs> <laughs> um, imagine directing a scene like that. I could think that must be so awkward when you're in the film and you're like, so yeah. this, scene, so in this scene we got Happy Hogan, that's me, and then you, and then I'm gonna like kind of do like a sort of play fight thing, and then you're gonna like sort of wrestle me to the ground and then like sit on me, and she's like, well, sorry, on, on you, I'm like, sorry, yeah, yeah, because yeah, I'm the direct. I'm telling you, this is how. My director's vision, I want to see this scene play <laughs> out. Like, I want you to sit on me, and I want that to be the scene. Um, and then after about 50 takes, he probably got it. <laughs> <laughs> Rose down bad, what can I say? Um, <laughs> um, I love, yeah, I just love John Favreau. Like, he, like, John Favreau, when he joined Star Wars, to go on a slight tangent, was mm. like, it was a like a renaissance, and it was beautiful. Little, so. to, to an extent. It was. Mandalorian series three. We like. I'm not being funny, but Mandalorian season one, like alone, yeah, like incredible. The, sh- 
Yeah, but think of what we got off the back of Mandalorian season one. That's why I'm calling it a Renaissance. True. I'll I'll there give you, you that. I'll give you that. There I'll you give go. You. It was a bit of hope. it was a bright spark of hope in a time of Rise of Skywalker. That's what I'm saying. Like it's it's a Renaissance. It's but yeah. the, but this I is agree the, with you. I, like, I do agree with John you. Fa- John Favreau's introduction to Star Wars wasn't just a Renaissance of Star Wars. Like it kind of spearheaded Marvel doing these shows now. Like Mandalorian mm-hmm. was successful and it caused so many other franchises to do and it caused it caused phase four of marvel oh god (laughs) but some of the marvel shows are still good like i agree i agree i think one division is brilliant i think loki's great incredible loki's incredible you watch season two i haven't seen it oh phenomenal like absolutely phenomenal absolutely phenomenal i haven't seen it so maybe i need to go see it then yeah so that's what i'm saying john favreau I love him. He's beautiful. So what a beautiful boy. I do love John Favreau. I, I I have a love hate relationship with him because it's sort of like on one hand, Mandalorian series three and the Lion King live action adaptation. On the other hand, Mandalorian season one and two, exactly. Elf and Elf. Iron Elf Man. alone. Yeah. Elf alone yeah. is like come on. <laughs> like Bro should have just retired after like, <laughs> like <laughs> Elf alone is worth God knows how much. Um. Yeah. Exactly. He's a, he's, he's a great guy. And we've seen him in person at Star Wars Celebration. Yep, Lovely I guy. Lovely yep. guy. Yeah. Yeah, true. So that like we met him in like chunk no, hand. We, just saw, we, him we, stage, we saw him yeah. on the stage, but he came across yeah. like a lovely guy. Anyway, yeah. Cooper, what is anyway, your number two in this My number list? two is Avengers Assemble. So yep. is mine. Oh my god! So is mine. Really? So our list is identical bar identical. Our placements of bar, Iron Man Thorn, 2 and 4. Man 2. To be honest though, I would probably swap my Thor and Iron Man 2 around. Upon talking about it, I would honestly prefer to watch Iron Man 2 than Thor. We agree genuinely. with everything. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Um. So Avengers, <clears throat> it's just a, it's it's a complete it's a f- feat in cinema, isn't it? I think oh, we, we I also saw, I saw it in cinema, and it was I still remember it was I phenomenal. Didn't. I I I remember. I didn't care. Uh, God, how old was that? Twenty twelve. On DVD. I would been, God, I would have been young, young. But I remember watching it in cinemas, um, and it was a. A feat. Some may call it a mm. marvel. <laughs> <sighs> <Fuck yeah. laughs> um, no, I, I think it's, it's, it's a feat, and it is completely that. Um, I think it is overlooked a little bit now because of you know that Avengers Endgame is so massive. Um, yeah. People don't really look back at this film, but actually, it was a massive, massive accomplishment for, for the time. It yeah. wasn't you know this was phase one. This was just this was the the universe. You know, at this point, mm-hmm. they they'd had a fantastic run, and they did exactly what DC failed to do. Um, yeah, which you know we talked about a couple of episodes ago anyway. But it's the same sort of thing. It's like Iron Man is a great introduction to that character. Incredible Hulk has the source. Thor <laughs> has uh, something. Captain America: The First Avenger cooked. Iron Man 2 exists and then you bring it all together and in those you're also introducing those other characters Black Widow and um, Hawkeye who then you know everyone coming together and it's so satisfying to watch that happen you're watching it's a proper crossover event and you know what it actually worked I don't even think it's about like how good or bad the previous films were mm. the fact that it came together got, the, the fact it we got standalone movies for these characters beforehand the fact that they stuck to their guns and didn't do Iron Man, uh, so they did Iron Man, Hulk, OK mm-hmm. Avengers. They did standalone movies for at least four of the Avengers mm-hmm. leading up to it. And in those movies, we got the establishment of the other Avengers. It set up Loki being the villain. Thor set up Loki being the villain. Mm-hmm. And it worked perfectly. Tom Hiddleston, not only is he a phenomenal actor and guy anyway, him in Avengers Assemble is absolutely phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Like, better it, than he was in Loki. Oh, I, I, honestly, Loki, I think... Loki, better than he was in Thor, sorry. I'm saying, I think... Still to this day, for Loki's character, I genuinely think mm. Avengers Assemble is one of the greatest. Um, and I think that's really where... How I always talk about Robert Downey Jr. being like, Tony Stark is Robert Downey Jr. I truly believe Loki is Tom Hiddleston. Mm. Like, that, like, it's down, like, that's how good the casting is for him. And don't get me wrong, he's good in Thor, in the first Thor movie, mm. but this is this where is he better. really elevates. And, oh, and it's, it's, it's like a night and day. But he's, and written, like, he's written a lot better in this as yes. well, which oh, helps. Um, and also, there's the comedy in Avengers Assemble as well. Mm. It's funny. It has the perfect comedy beat. It's the when... perfect. It's that sort of starting point of it is, proper yeah. Marvel humor, isn't it? Where it's yeah, still it's the funny, start of proper Marvel. Yeah, but it's you know you could sort of yeah. see where it could potentially be yeah. off track. To, it's like but I like it. Yeah, it's good. When Thor picks up Loki and slams him about, still to this day, one of the funniest moments in Marvel. That is in this movie. What do you mean? At the top of, in Stark Tower. Hulk, you mean? 
That's what I said. I think you said Thor. Oh, maybe I did. I meant Hulk. I meant Hulk. <laughs> That's what I was That's confused. That's what I meant. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that is a great scene. That's a phenomenal yeah. scene. And I love the, the, the bit in the Like the take the stairs well. and everything. I like. love the intense yeah. scenes as well. I, I love how yeah. Loki's entire plan after getting caught is to unleash the Hulk. Because he knows it will yes. cause problems. It's it's brilliant um, sort of mind play. Um, seeing Tony Stark uh, and Steve Rogers sort of face off against each other, that sort of antagonistic yeah. clashing of characters. I really love that as well. I think that was really well mm-hmm. executed by both of those. And I think it just... It, it was just interesting. I love that. I love watching yeah. that that unfold and that happen. And it's satisfying yeah. to see these characters come together in the same way that it's been satisfying since. You know, with Avengers two, it's not as as good, but it, it has that same sort of appeal. Especially when you come to Infinity War and Endgame, seeing everything come together, it's so oh, yeah. satisfying. And that's yeah. this is the start of it. You know, they they tested it here. They they built films. They took their time. They were patient. They made five future films released them in cinemas, they did well, and then were able to pull this together and make mm-hmm. it a massive, massive, satisfying, you know, cinematic event. And I think that's yeah. super interesting that no one had done it before, and now everything is trying to do that. Everywhere, everything mm-hmm. is trying to be part of the same universe. This made films like TV shows. You could watch a TV it, show for years and follow an arc all the way through, yeah. and now it's with films. And this was one of the first series to really do yeah. that with about different characters. It's like in the it same kind of, world. Yeah. It kind of showed that Marvel was here to stay as well. It was yeah. like, now that you've established all these characters and finally established the group, it's like, okay, we are here. And then obviously from here on, they do other characters. But it was like, we've established our main group. We've established our main cast. Like, here is where we're going to go after this. And that kind of properly put, in like mm. what you were saying, like the the mist of like DC and stuff going on at that time, mm. it really, really, really put uh, Marvel on the map properly. Yeah, 100%. I think... Yeah. It, it, it was a, it was a huge point for Marvel, and I think there's a lot of key points in in Marvel's history, and I think this was sort of the first one, and they made mistakes after this that they I think later learned from, and I think mm-hmm. that's super interesting. And you look at that with Phase Two, I think there was a few rough starts towards the beginning of Phase Two of uh, of Marvel, yeah. and I think have a look at Phase Two. So yeah, we've got Phase in Phase Two we've got Iron Man Three, then Thor: The Dark World, then Captain America: oh, okay, Winter Soldier, yeah. then Guardians of the Galaxy, Age of Ultron, okay, Ant Man. Yeah. For me, the best film out of all of them is probably Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, it's not even it's Winter yeah. Soldier is incredible. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but Guardians of the Galaxy is just great like i love yeah. that film um it's I'm, I'm a, yeah i'm a james gunn stan what can i say like, i, I, say, I, I think it. that's i think it's down to a lot down to james gunn i think yeah creative yeah. vision and just being able to pull something new out of these characters uh, i didn't realize as well that the guardians of the galaxy were like the first non like avengers marvel characters yeah, to yeah. get like a new film there. It's, yeah it's crazy Which is incredible. It, i didn't it? even think about that yeah um and it's yeah a god's galaxy was it's i mean it's it was it started one of the best trilogies, but that's for mm. another. But I love that. I think it, it, it works yeah. incredibly well, and it's 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 great yeah. to see. And I, I think Avengers was a great starting point for that. It's like they they really got the characters to a peak here, and then went, how can we take it further from here? Yeah. So I you know, I respect that. I, I love what they did with this. It's mm-hmm. it's one of those iconic films we can talk about forever. Um, any yeah. sort of scenes from here that sort of take your fancy? Anything you don't like? Um, do you know what? There's not any specific things from this that I. There's nothing I can think of off the top of my head that I don't like from Aven- Avengers Assemble. Um, I've go got on. one. I I oh. don't really like um, Hawkeye in this. Really, I think it's boring I, I, because I, I I think because we didn't see much of him in Thor, and then yeah, we start yeah. this film and he's possessed. Yeah, I think that's the only. It's a shame that we didn't get to see much of him. Mm. It really up to it, but yeah. then I guess the payoff is obviously we got to see so much of the other characters. It's um, but. Then at the same time, there's a lot of good Hawkeye stuff later on. So yeah, I mean a lot argue is a stretch. Set film. Yeah, but I mean it's still a decent amount. I know. I just kind of was like when I, I think watching this film, which is the one thing I don't like about it because we don't know anything about him at this point, and it kind of feels mm-hmm. like they're just doing something with him by making mm-hmm. him like possessed, and then uh, I don't know. I just I just don't really love what they do there. But you know, mm-hmm. it is what it is. They 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 yeah. they cook. I remember more of my favorite scenes than like the bad stuff from it. If that makes mm. sense, like the like the throwing scene, like it's the shawarma that they get at the end of this movie. Did you get a shawarma? In the shawarma stuff. Yeah, yeah, like that I, from I the end that. of the movie. I yeah, love that. I love some of the 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 iconic the iconic rotate like the the, the iconic Avengers camera oh, spin. I mean that's incredible. The Hulk scene where he turns into the Hulk and punches the the giant floating thing. Yeah. Um, the 
just like all the aliens coming out of the portal, yeah. all of the city, like and of course just... the post credit scene. What was the post credit scene for Avengers? Thanos? Oh God, yes, Thanos' first ever appearance. Yes, in the MCU. Yeah, it is. It's his first little thing, and it's nowhere near anything what it looked like again because they actually did it completely practically in this film. It's the only time Thanos has ever done practically. Yeah, they'd use the big practical mask, like proper setup though. It's yeah. like it just shows that they had a vision, didn't they? Yeah, and it's, yeah. And it's super exciting. Like they wanted to sort of tease it and mm-hmm. get everyone hyped up, and they did that exactly. They proved that they could do this, and they can take it further. And it, I, somehow it worked. I don't. I still don't really know how it worked, but it was it was great. Mm-hmm. And, it, yeah. and it stood the test of time. You know, we're how many? We're twelve years on from that. Crazy. We're, we're, it's wild. We're we're now at the point where it's been as many years since that film than it was from the year two thousand when it came out. That's a strange analogy, but it's not, I guess. Well, this is an interesting little thing to think about. Sorry that I'm boring. Well, I don't you, remember the year fuck. 2000. Jesus. What? So it doesn't really mean anything yeah, to me. Yeah, me neither, but like... That's fair, yeah, actually. Well, fucking cut it out then, dickhead. I mean, it's up to you. I just, I just thought that was interesting. <laughs> I think like, it's more that the fact that we've gone through the entire peak of Marvel and we are now in like a recession of Marvel. It's like... <laughs> I yeah. think that's more of that's a, more interesting, isn't it? I guess in I'll twelve be, years, we. I guess when we talk more about these projects and like in, yeah. in future episodes, um, if people fucking if people like this, um, yeah. then it'll be sort of interesting to discuss because I feel like my strong opinions more come with later Marvel films. I think with Phase One of Marvel, it's just sort of cute. Yeah, that's. I think yeah, everyone's, you know what? everyone's yes. sort of just like, oh, yeah, Phase One, it is, it's cute. cute. When and you then, rewatch them, you're like, "Oh my god!" Like, remember this? Like, mm, mm. God, like, look at the actors. Phase oh two and god. phase three, you're like, "Well, this is shit." Yeah, um, which is why I quite phase two. Um, phase two, phase Thor, three. Thor: The Dark World, Avengers: Age of Ultron. I quite like Age of Ultron. And Man and the Wasp. <laughs> Bro, you can't hang on. You say, hang on, you've just said, and then we get to bad f- Marvel Phase 2 and Phase 3. That's not what and I you... said. That's not what I said. I said there's some bad stuff in there. And what I'm saying is that the Marvel Phase 2 and Phase 3 stuff are, are more in the realms of where I feel like I can criticise. Because ah, okay. in Phase 1, as I say, it's cute. It's sort of early days. Yeah, that's fair, it sort yeah. of feels like so long ago. It's like it's like you don't slag off the OGs, do you? But you can mm-hmm. slag off the, the films after. And by the time we get to Endgame, we can have criticisms yeah. regarding that you know um especially when we get to phase four Ooh. phase four is probably a lot like because i by phase four i was like full on on the marvel train like full on like me too phase and class f- phase like, four by the beginning of phase four i was fully on board by the end of phase four i stopped watching to be fair Phase four, oh, though, no, actually, has some, actually, I has think, some low key heat. You know what? I, some you know what I'll heat. say, actually. You know what I'll say? I have actually seen every part of phase four. In fairness, so have I. phase five is where I stopped watching. So I've not uh, seen, I think I've actually not seen any of phase five. No, Guardians 3, yes. And I'll be seeing Deadpool and Wolverine opening day. Thank you very much. I <laughs> uh, watched uh, one episode of Secret Invasion. I thought it was shit. Are we talking about just movies? Are we talking about TV shows as well? All of them. I've only seen in uh, in, so in, in, in in phase four. I've only seen Guardians three and one episode of Secret Invasion. So I have seen all of the movies. Mm-hmm. I've not watched Echo. I've not watched. I've watched two episodes of Secret Invasion. What other TV shows were there? Hot, Loki hot, season three. Loki season two. I've hot, seen. Hot take. Yeah. Marvel was better when it was just films. It was a lot less confusing. It was a lot less confusing. It was a lot less required yeah. for you to have a Disney Plus subscription as well. Yeah, to watch it's very film. hard nowadays. It's like to keep them in track of yeah. everything. Yeah, it's a bit it's, too. It's much. hard because it's constant. I feel like the ma- it's one of the issues that Marvel has at the moment is that the machine is constantly turning over. But you look at it, it right? Like, it's the machine doesn't stop. It's if the moment go- a movie comes out, yeah. there's another TV show coming out. Like once a movie's it, done in cinemas, they stopped. Show. They've slowed down a little bit now. Yeah, but it's it, they had a period where you're right. It was like movie, film, movie, yeah. movie, film, movie, TV show, movie, TV show. Yeah, I think the thing I like about this as well is that with Phase One not up until Phase Two, from Avengers in 2012 to Guardians of the Galaxy 2004, 2004, 2014, <laughs> <laughs> um, there's no new characters introduced. Yeah. And then even then, you get one with Ant Man after in 2015, and then Phase Three you get like the occasional Doctor Strange, Spider Man, fair enough, 
Thor, that's fine, Black Panther, Infinity War, and then you don't really get any more until Captain Marvel. So you haven't got many new concepts to sort of get your head around and familiarise yourself with. But then you get to phase four, and then you immediately back to back, you've got Black Widow, which is introducing her sister, played by Florence Pugh, who's going to be apparently in a lot more stuff going forward. Yeah, she likes Thunderbolts and stuff. You've got um, Shang-Chi and all of that side of things in that area of the Marvel Universe. Eternals and that whole area of the Marvel Universe. And then Spider-Man No Way, Ho- uh, Spider-Man no Way Home, introducing like multiverse stuff. Doctor Strange doing more multiverse stuff. Thor being shit. And then Black Panther introducing that whole underwater Atlantis world. Mm-hmm. And then you've got all these shows and series as well. Doing so, so WandaVision, I've Falcon and Winter all... Soldier, Loki, Hawkeye. Um, Moon Knight, Miss Marvel, there's uh, She Hulk. There's too many concepts and different ideas. I have seen some of which I are great, see, but there's just too yeah. much going on to, to keep track of it. I have definitely seen all of Phase Four, with without a doubt. Yeah, me too. Every movie on there, and then mm-hmm. I've not seen Secret Invasion. I need to watch What If Season Two. I've not seen Echo. I've not seen. Yeah, so I've only seen one series from Phase Five, but I've seen all the movies. Mm. All the movies I see, like I I, I watch all. The maybe movies I need to on. actually watch these at some point. You know, maybe I need to catch up and watch Ant Man uh, Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania. Maybe I need to watch the Marvels. Uh, Marvels was good. Okay. Marvels was good. I enjoyed Marvels. Uh, uh, did, you watch Mar- did you see Miss Mar- Marvel? I saw Miss Marvel, yeah. Miss Marvel was good, so it's fine. I enjoy it. That was I sort of one Marvel. of the ones where I was like... I've seen it twice. I think when I watched these shows, I was sort of like, this is kind of a point where, me where I'm like, I just don't care anymore. Yeah. Anyway, let's talk about anyway. number one. Let's talk about Captain yeah. America with First Avenger, because that's our number one, right? At one point in my life, this was my favourite Marvel movie. Mm. No word of a lie. I can completely understand that. It's a great film. Yeah, it's a phenomenal film. It's a really great film. It's a really um, great film. What do you love about it? I had the biggest crush on Peggy Carter when I was younger. <laughs> that wasn't what I, was I had. I had such a crush on Peggy Carter. Um, and to be honest, the movie, as much as I am not like a massive Captain America guy, like I was never a like major Captain America guy. No. The movie, having it, I think. Having that movie as a, like, doing these first few movies, mm. not that I watch them in cinemas, but then doing a one that sets so way back is so interesting. I also like 100%. them doing a one that's based so far before the actual MCU, mm-hmm. like when you watch them in order. It's amazing. Having Red Skull, phenomenal. Yeah, I love that. Like, great villain. Unbelievable villain. The romance between Peggy and um, and Steve Rogers so Bro. believable so believable they breaks my heart every time that's great and i honestly believe watching um end game is the best payoff or it, i remember I'll how much here, you loved it's that my at the time. it's my favorite payoff and yeah you, mm, you remember i remember, I remember you loved it you were really yes yeah. it's, it's my favorite payoff mm. from watching all the marvel movies for end game 100 percent. end of end game it was honestly like like that's i didn't cry i didn't cry in Endgame until that scene. Really? Which I know is, yeah, genuinely. Mm. The the Tony Stark didn't really get me. Mm. Um, I was emotional, obviously, but it didn't, like, make yeah. me cry. Whereas this scene was like, oh, my God, like, the payoff was unbelievable. Because when I watched First Avenger, I was so invested. Sure. Like, their, yeah. their, their romance was so believable. The, the or like, make sure you come back so we can have the last dance, like, that kind of thing. Like, him in the ship, like, Peggy, I'm going under, like, save that dance for me. Like, S S. S T like genuinely still it. this day yeah. one of my film Marvel movies. I don't think it's, a doubt. I don't think it's a perfect film, but I think it's it's, it's not perfect. But at I all. think like, it's it's got such charm to it. I, for me, yeah, I think it's that. It's thing. cute, it's, exactly. It's, like literally, it's cute. <laughs> it's easily the best of these. These for me. Oh, I, I don't even doubt, know why yeah. initially it was in my third place, but I think actually thinking about it, there's something about this film which is just gorgeous. I think the main cast is brilliant. Um, yeah. I love the uh, the way the film starts. I love that he's that, that sort of like young weak lad who wants to fight in the war mm-hmm. and. You know, you, phenomenal CGI for the time as well. Really, really effective, yeah. believable like look on Steve Rogers there. Um, the aesthetic of wartime America is so fascinating. Yeah, when they go to like the show, like the sort of expo show and stuff, and they see stuff. Fascinating, like the visuals, the aesthetic of it. They get it absolutely down to a T. I I think the story of Steve Rogers and who he is and his heart mm-hmm. and his yeah. soul is so believable and rich, and it's perfectly played by Chris Evans. Um, oh, perfect. I you know I, I love it. I think again, as you say, the the romance between him and Peggy Carter is so believable. I think there's a lot of this which is just riding on those castings, but also just the, the general thing of it. I love the scene where he gets the super soldier serum and then 
chases a guy just out on the street yeah. and he doesn't even realize like his powers really mm-hmm. he goes like, out there bolting down the street like top shirtless like it's crazy diving the water that like, for me yeah. is the first time i've watched something where it's made me feel like i'm watching indiana jones again i loved indiana jones as a kid yeah and i love that point, aesthetic actually. of like wartime america mm-hmm. um and that that sold it for me completely i was like oh my god i love this scene where he's just chasing through he's holding up the yeah the car door as like a shield which is yeah. a great foreshadowing but works really effectively um and then obviously having like howard stark as well yeah like, howard that's stark such a good, and everything it's yeah brilliant it's such like the the like having that character i haven't already had iron man it's like mm-hmm. yeah 100%. and like i'm saying i think the payoff later on is phenomenal mm-hmm. like bucky like the, yeah. all the bucky stuff bucky disappearing like dying mm-hmm. it's like it's great and it sets up a lot of good super soldiers up later on as well mm. um you get a lot of good then, stuff here i think that's yeah. that's the key thing with it is it's the, the the second half of the film is kind of criticized for going too sort of overboard with the action and stuff i think that's the payoff you know in a sense yeah, I, do as well. I think the emotional heart of the film comes in the first act and i if i had if i was pressed i would say the first half of the film is my favorite but yeah there's a visual aesthetic with the end of the film as well and this sort of liberation kind of vibe this this progression of steve rogers as a character for where he needs to be by the time avengers comes around he needs to have that in field experience and i love that i love the whole thing he's just someone who is desperate to fight for his country yeah. and to fight for what's right and again the whole stuff with red skull i think looks brilliant the introduction of the tesseract being there there's yeah. a lot of elements in this which are really really well handled it's set up done so well like there's so mm. much stuff when you think about it set up in this movie but it doesn't feel like you don't feel bombarded with it if that makes sense yeah, of course. and even on even on rewatch knowing all like how all these stories end it never feels like a bombardment it always feels right no. Um, and I think you're, you've, the Indiana Jones thing that you said, like I was thinking about it there, like it's perfect. It's like yeah. they've made an, an obviously an older movie, but made it like an an older movie, like how those old action Amer- um, World War Two American or like the the war mm. America movies used to be made, like your Indiana Jones. It's such a good idea. Yeah. It could have had that same. It, had, it sort of. It was also like a modern version of that. They couldn't go too hard into it, like the Indiana Jones like punch sound effects yeah. and stuff. But yeah, yeah. it gave me that feeling because I loved Indiana Jones as a kid. I loved watching it, and even though we got an Indiana Jones film in sort of mid two thousands, it wasn't one that I at the time loved. Um, mm. Although now I quite like it. Um, but that you're watching this again. I didn't watch this until quite a long time after it had already come out. I, I saw was the same. I saw Avengers before I saw First Avenger because I didn't really care. I did as well. And then I came back and then watched it and I was like, "Wow, this film yeah. is great!" Again, like uh, just just brilliant. I I, I could just keep yeah. gassing it up. There's nothing really specific to say about it. I think the ending though is perfect. It's one of the best endings oh, in a Marvel film, yeah. where he's yeah. you know he wakes up and. He panics yeah. and he runs into the city and the cars come around him and he's in Times Square in the modern day, a man completely out of time. And what's the last line as he just goes, I had a date? And then it cuts to black. Yeah. Oh, like, perfect he, ending to that. Does he, don't they, do they try and replicate like a, like that era room for him and he works yeah. out or something like that? Yeah, he, room, he works. he runs outside. He works yeah. it out because he's lying in bed and the nurse comes and looks after him and he's listening to the to like a football game on the radio and he goes, yeah. I was there for that match. I watched that happen. Yeah. What you, he like, who are you? What are you doing? Fights his way out, gets his way into sort of New York and then that, yeah. that phenomenal line where he's like, I had a date. I'm saying the payoff. That's like, like that's for him. It's like his it's, where his yeah. head's at. It's like it's not even about the fact that he's basically time travel. It's not yeah. even the fact that he's woke up a, a man out of time in something he doesn't recognize. It should freak him out. Is he knows he'll never see her again. I think it's generally that though. It, it, it's believable. Like mm-hmm. watching that movie. Like I watched that movie like quite close to when Infinite War Endgame came out, mm-hmm. and like watching that movie, I it's one of those things where I never thought it would get a payoff. Like mm-hmm. it's. It's. It, I was sad because I thought, and what I thought knew would never. They'd never see each other again. Or obviously, mm-hmm. they do see each other again, but they'd never have be able to have that life together, which I really wanted them to have. 100%. And then you get to end game, and it's like it's just yeah. The movie's phenomenal. Like yeah. the action, everything. It's it's brilliant. It's it's brilliant, and I think you've got it spot on. I think both of our enthusiasm is sort of very. Yeah. obvious for it I, it's a great film it's not perfect but it sort of has a lot of everything i look for in an early marvel film and i think it's a perfect introduction to the character the cast is great cinematography is great the music's great everything is so exciting about this film and i love it as a whole phase one is i think cute is probably the best word it's for cute. it it's perfect it's, cute. it's yeah it's perfect it's way of describing it because it's it's yeah. it's sort of charming and it, in its own little right it's far from perfect and it's probably you know it, it doesn't quite hit the same feelings that like Endgame or Infinity War even special effects wise like it doesn't quite have that thing yet it's not found its mold but because of that yeah. it's a little bit rough around the edges and it is 
cute. It's it is yeah. charming and it's uh, always enjoyable to go back to these films. Just knowing where the franchise goes from there mm. to watch these again is just yeah. It's just something it's prob- really special. Yeah, I think it's probably my least favorite phase, but not because I think Course, it's yeah. bad. Because it's the one I'm least passionate about. If that makes sense. Yeah, it's sort I think of. You hit the it's cute. It's cute. Like it's not bad, but it's just like it's so long ago. Like I wasn't like obviously the back end that kind of started with Marvel, but. I was so young when a lot of these movies came out, and um, yeah, it's it's cute. You've put, like honestly perfectly described it as cute. It's fantastic, and I think with that lovely note, we'll round it off yeah. there for the Marvel talk and go on to one of our little segments. Is it time, Cooper? I think it is time, George. It is time for just news. Just news. It's a jingle that we don't have here. Jingle, <laughs> jingle, jingle, jingle. Um, yeah, we don't have a jingle for this, but basically what Just News is, if you're not familiar with the concept, is every week, me or Cooper will pull out a news article that we found that's very funny on the internet and read it to the other person. And usually, with me, I don't read the articles before putting them out there. I just kind of see the type <laughs> of the headline and think, this is funny, let's talk about this. Um, so, Cooper... Have you read this one? I have. No, I haven't. Oh, have you? Oh. I haven't. That's bollocks, though. <laughs> But I, uh, again, I'm interested and I'm 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 keen to watch it. And I think there's a video which is even better. Oh, so that'd be something okay. to watch. Um, are you ready, Cooper? I'm ready. At the Florida Man Games, big crowds cheer competitors evading police and wrestling over beer. <laughs> what? At the Florida Man Games? No, the th- famous. Th- you're a fan of the Olympics? No. You're a fan of the World Cup? Not really. I'm a fan of the Olympics. The Florida Man Games. No. Same thing. No? Um, <laughs> Same level. And there's a video here, which I'm, we'll come back to. Um, St. Augustine. Uh, F- FLA, I presume it's Florida. Florida. Yeah. Um, they rose up by the dozens from across Florida. Uh, caricatured compet- uh, competitors in tank tops and cut-off shorts for a showdown that treats evading police and wrestling over beer like an Olympic sport. Promoted as the most insane athletic showdown on earth, the Florida Man That's Games hell poke. Of a I know it is, isn't it? <laughs> the Florida Man Games poke fun at the state's reputation for bizarre stories that involve brawling, drinking, gunfire, reptile wrangling, and other antics carrying the risk of time in jail or intensive care. Sorry, sorry. Brawling, okay. Drinking, okay. Gunfire, rep- t- reptile wrangling. This is Florida. What? We're talking about. This is Florida. I mean. What? <laughs> um, the games kicked off Saturday with the Star, Stang- Star Spangled Banner played on electric guitar. What a weird coincidence! <laughs> yeah, it's like Captain America. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> then spectators sipping canned beer behind metal barricades cheered and frequently shouted expletives as a dozen teams battle uh, battled in contests inspired by real events from America's most surreal state. James Gordon. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> this isn't the Batman episode. Shit. Uh, of D Land won the first event, wolfing down a plate loaded with barbecue pork and sausage a fraction of a second before his nearest competitor. He chugged a beer to celebrate. Shit, I might compete in the Florida game. Can we do a sort of uh, a Newcastle Man games? Newcastle Man games. <laughs> it's, just a, it's like a Greg sausage roll and a pan of brown ale. <laughs> yeah. it's, one, it's one of every Greg's menu item Ooh, and a brown ale. Oh, yeah, very good. I like that. Sounds like a lunch, to be honest. I just have that for lunch. <laughs> <You're so> um, <laughs> uh, I've lived in Florida my whole life, Gordon said, after washing sauce from his hands and beard. <laughs> it's a really unnecessary detail. They're calling these events. Uh, I'm calling this Tuesday afternoon. <laughs> he's a funny. <laughs> he's a funny fucker, isn't he, James Gordon? Um, <laughs> What what event had contenders Mate, dueling? Every time you say James Corden, I keep thinking you're going to say James Corden, and I keep my brain like auto corrects to James Corden, and I can't. <laughs> Oh god, I didn't oh, think about god. that. Oh, I fucking hate James Corden. Can we just get that on record? <laughs> <laughs> if he, I'd, um, I'd love to see him in the Florida Man games, I can't lie. Oh yeah, me too. He'd be class. Uh, one of their uh, contenders dueling in muddy water and inflatable pool, pummeling each other with weapons made of poo noodles and duct tape. <laughs> Another was a theft simulation relay in which competitors raced while toting a pair of bicycles, copper pipes, and. Uh, catalytic catalytic, catalytic, com- catalytic from, converters. Sorry, right. from cars. Larry Donnelly uh, trained for the relay race by riding a bicycle around his neighbourhood with a second bike strapped to his back. It paid off Saturday when he won his heat after picking up a bike in each hand and running with them. Bloody <laughs> hell! Oh my god! I have an absolute disregard for self-preservation. I will do anything. Evidently, 
Um, says, yeah. says Donnelly, 42, who owns a St. Augustine water pressure washing business and serves as captain of five man team Hanky Spanky. <laughs> Fuck me. Good when I was in the military, I did a little alligator wrestling. Is that what they oh do in the military? Oh my god. Or is that a euphemism for wanking what? off his best mate? I, do you know what? It wouldn't <laughs> surprise me if he actually fought an alligator. Like, like genuinely, in Florida especially, it would not surprise me. <laughs> Other events involved contenders wrestling sumo style while holding pitchers of beer or running from actual sheriff's uh, deputies while jumping fences and avoiding obstacles. Others faced a scramble to grab cash flying in, stim- uh, in simulated hurricane winds. <laughs> Um, spectators paid real money, $45 a ticket or more, to watch the games at Francis Field in downtown St. Augustine. Yusuf El uh, Shahibi said he and his wife made the 180 mile oh trip from Port St. Richie to watch the stupidity occur on the grandest, most spectacular scale. To be fair, I would fly out there just to see this. I was going to say this at the end. I would actually go to like to be a part, not, not take part, but to watch this. Absolutely. I think it'd be a good laugh. There's a, so lot, funny. there's a lot in here. Um, I'm not going to read all of it because there's like a full article here. Um, but there's a sort of there's just a lot about different things. People, um, the Florida man phenomenon seeped into the nation's conscious thanks to point and Twitter accounts started in 2013 with the handle uh, at underscore Florida man. And the account had real life stories of the world's worst superhero sharing news handles such as Florida man bites dog to establish dominance and Florida man <laughs> tries to pay for McDonald's with weed. Is the Grand Theft Auto six set in Florida? Or yeah, Miami? Miami, Miami, Florida. Oh my god! Yeah, Florida this Man better games. be a mission. Yeah, this better to, be to, a mission. To round this off, six. to round this off, I did want to do something a little bit impromptu off the back of this oh, just new story. Have you heard of the Florida Man search challenge thing? No. So oh, this would be great then. So what you basically do is you go into Google, you type in your yeah. your birthday, just the yeah. day and the and the month followed by the words Florida man and you can see yeah. what some Florida man has been arrested for doing on your birthday no way because there is all because there is enough articles for the whole year so I'm going to do mine first 4th of March Florida man uh, what have we got here 4th of March here we go I'll read out my my 4th of March Florida man story okay. oh it's it's it will it will it won't let me but I'll read out the headline at the very least um Florida man accused of jumping naked on neighbor's trampoline before breaking into home. <laughs> what, what have you? What have so, you found? So I have one. It's not as interesting. There's a second one from Fox Thirty Five Orlando. Florida man who allegedly attempted to buy a child for a hundred thousand dollars died while in custody. <laughs> oh my god! It's funny, isn't it? <laughs> Bro, just news has turned to just Florida. That's all my news stories are going to be from now. On. Just Florida, <laughs> just Florida, Florida bait, Florida. Bay. <laughs> just anyway, the new um, that is pretty much the end of the episode. There, thank you all so much for listening. Hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more of these sort of Marvel reviews covering Phase Two, Three, Four, obviously drop us a follow. Leave us a little good review if you like it. A little five-star review over on Spotify. That would be lovely. And tell us over on Twitter and any sort of social media if you want to see more of this kind of thing. And if you don't, keep your opinions to yourself. (laughs) 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 Um, Thank you so much for listening and hope to see you all next week. What have we got next week? Because it is pretty... Oh, Oh, we've got an exciting one next week. Oh, it is exciting one next week. exciting one next week. Uh, Next week, we're getting into a little bit of Star Wars fever because we're getting closer to May 4th. It's the time of the year where all of us Star Wars fans start to shudder with excitement over new Star Wars content. (laughs) And we are talking about Star Wars again. But specifically, we are comparing The Rise of Skywalker, Episode 9, to The Unmade, Episode 9. Jewel of the Fates. We read that entire script and we compared both versions, the film and the unmade script of what could have been. The good, the bad, and the shit. Um, good, good way of summing it up. Yeah, literally. that's pretty much next week, so we'll stay around for that. That'll be next Thursday. And yeah, thank you so much for listening. Bye. Bye. <laughs>